Hi, this is Andre Minka. I'm the founder of Trademark Factory. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a history of a failed trademark application. In this case, we're gonna talk about trademark quash. I've never done these videos before like this. So if you like it, please like this video and post in the comments below because that will give me a pretty good idea whether I should be doing more of these, less of these, <laughs> or whether I should not be doing these at all. So, no, seriously, uh, this is something that I think will be very helpful for uh, brand owners, for business owners, for entrepreneurs who are curious about uh, trademarking and how the trademarking process works uh, in real cases. So uh, I'm going to do a few of these uh, and uh, we're going to see if that uh, can uh, strike a nerve uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. So with this intro, let's go straight into the, uh, the review. So Quash, a trademark was filed uh, in May of 2022, relatively recent. Uh, so it was killed in uh, June of 2023 uh, and uh, obviously filed in the US. This is the U US trademarks offices website so all information is public uh and uh, that's that's one thing that you should actually know once you file your trademark all of this becomes public information so <clears throat> we can go through 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 the mark through the application of course we will uh we can see that it was filed for a very, <laughs> very extremely long list of goods and services uh this is atypical uh, again, we're going to uh, touch on that. This is this is crazy. This is an insanely long list. Uh, and then, so we're going to remove this. Uh, they're all filed based on intent to use. Uh, we can also see that, so it was filed by JHO, Intellectual Property Holdings. Uh, I'm assuming it wasn't their first trademark. Um, and uh, so it was filed through uh, Gideon Eckhaus. Uh, so he's a IP counsel at Bang Energy. Um, so again, I'm not going to provide uh, any personal commentary on uh, what he did, but we're gonna talk about the, the, the results of what happened uh, in this trademark application. So, so that's the status. Let's go to documents. And uh, here we'll start with the, the application itself. So we can go here and open it. Yeah, so here's the application. Um, serial number, well, that's, that's normal. Here's the trademark. We'll file as a word mark. Standard characters, quash, blah, blah, blah. That's the company, wherever they are. Again, the, the, the information that you provide about the, the mailing address, public information, uh, email address, now they're hiding. Uh, it used to be that USBTO would show that and people would get <laughs> uh, spammed ruthlessly. Um, so uh, they're not showing the... Uh, the email addresses anymore, which is good. Uh, so they filed for a crazy amount of uh, goods and services uh, for multiple classes, uh, class 09, you know, downloadable software in the nature of mobile application, computer hardware, downloadable software, downloadable software for bubble. Basically, they, they, they filed for everything under the sun in class nine. Uh, they filed for this is this is ridiculous on honestly this is this is ridiculous uh it shows that really there were there, there wasn't a lot of thought given to uh what should go into this but it probably allowed uh for uh, <laughs> a lot of hours to be uh to be billed for this trademark application again i don't know how the attorney dealt in this situation. I wasn't in the room, uh, but to me, such a long list uh, is is never something you want to see for a proper trademark application. Okay, so we got class 28, uh, which is 
normally a class for games. So again, a bunch of stuff here, uh, you know, for um, virtual reality headsets to uh, computer game consoles to, you know, uh, games adapted for use with television receivers, like all sorts of stuff. Uh, class 35, advertising services, advertising via electronic media, organizing exhibitions and events in the fields of software, advertising, like all sorts of stuff again. Uh, online retail store services featuring virtual reality and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Umbrellas, <laughs> you know, blockchain tokens, like all sorts of stuff. Class 38, telecommunications. Uh, providing information about telecommunication, consulting in the field of telecommunication services. Yeah, uh, class 41, entertainment services, uh, providing online non-downloadable electronic publication resources for software developers. So all sort of stuff. So it wasn't, so here's what I'm seeing. Uh, it's not just a completely random list. So some thought was given to it. Uh, some selection happened here to ensure that the list of goods and services at least somewhat related to, uh, to, uh, to the area of their business, right? Uh, what is it? Blogs featuring comedy, drama, documentary, docu-series, animated mystery. Like, yeah, okay. And uh, class 42, development of computer hardware and software as a service. So lots of stuff here as well. Uh, and uh, do we have more? Let's see. Let's see if there's more. Yeah, it's class 45, online social networking dating services. Social networking, uh, compliance consulting in the field of social media. Yeah, all sorts of wonderful stuff. All of this, of course, uh, section 1B, which means that they haven't started using this brand to sell any products or services yet. It's kind of a placeholder application uh, in anticipation that they will launch their products and services under that brand. So um, uh, here's the uh, uh, here's one attorney, here's the other attorney. Uh, so funny enough, they don't, they, they hide emails for uh, applicants, but they show emails for um, attorneys. So when you file your own trademark uh, without an attorney, this stuff becomes visible. So I'm not saying that this was not filed through an attorney, it was filed through an attorney, but that's why we're seeing uh, trademark address, uh, email address here. Okay, so they filed this wonderful trademark application. Now let's see what happened later. Right, uh, so they got an office action. And uh, it's a long office action, so let, let it load. Yeah, so 61 page of an office action. An office action is when the trademarks office reviews your trademark application and uh, uh, they don't like something about your trademark application and when they don't, they, they send a letter that's called an office action. So actually, let's see something interesting here. So they file their trademark in uh, May of 2022, and uh, their trademark was searched uh, in uh, March of 2023. So that's 10 months, 10 months after filing, right? Then they got an office action right away. So let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look what happened here. So they got an office action. Well, uh, they got three months to respond. So it used to be six months uh, and then in uh, 2023, USPTO changed their rules. So now you only have three months to respond. Uh, and um, if you don't respond on time, your trademark gets abandoned. Uh, for, you, for a fee, you can ask for more time to respond, okay, once. So uh, that's that. So what did the trademarks office not like about the, the application? Well, first of all, they said there are, there's a prior filed application that's too close. Second, they said uh, there's likelihood of confusion with uh, uh, an existing a registered trademark. And uh, lastly, they didn't like that long list of goods and services. So 
Oh, actually, let me let me let me take take you one step back because I think that's important here. Uh, so going back to application. So at the very bottom, uh, at the very bottom of this, yeah, here's the important thing that I skipped and I shouldn't have. So the government fees, right? So the the, the applicants file their trademark in seven classes. Each class is three three hundred fifty dollars. So just in government fees alone they pay 2,450 bucks, right? I'm not even counting how much they paid to attorneys to put this application together, just the government fees alone, 2,500 bucks out the window, okay? So that's an important thing to, to keep in mind, right? There's always a government fee. The more classes you file in, the higher the government fee. All right, so uh, let's go back to the, to the office action to let it load again. Uh, there we go. All right, so there's a prior filed application uh, with this serial number. We can, okay, I can do a quick little search. Just open this application in a second. Uh, actually, you know what? I think it, I can see it here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that's the one, right? So there's, uh, there's another trademark application called Quash, the identical trademark application, and they filed it for Class 38, streaming uh, of live head-to-head -head debate, uh, Class 41 for providing a website that displays rankings of debate battle participants, uh, and um, yeah, sorry, that's, that's, that's a different one. So let's see, but it's still another one, right? So it's another trademark for class 42, providing website hosting platform for live streaming. So there's, there are overlaps there, right? So they're showing that this is one trademark that was filed. Uh, now there is, there's also another one, Quash Ball uh, for class nine for a bunch of scientific stuff and devices, class 16 for printed matter, class 19 for transportable buildings, class 25 clothing, class 28 for toys, 35 for advertising. So there's overlaps, right? 28, 35, the nine, like they all overlap here, 41. Um, okay, so let's see what else. And then there's this quash, um, oh, this other quash, which is uh, for class 42. Temporary use of non-downloadable cloud-based computer software platform for data processing and credit risk assessment, right? So there's a bunch of trademark, uh, trademark, uh, what am I trying to say? Trademark applications, right? So here, I found the one that was mentioned initially. So here's the, here's the other quash, right? And this one is for downloadable educational materials for teaching, reading, vocabulary, pronunciation, things like that. So this was filed in uh, 2019. So by now it's registered, but when the office action was issued, um, when the office was issued, it was still pending. So yeah, that's, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> I got, I got uh, too excited about this. So they, they, they put all these applications in the, in the office action as part of it. So let's go back um, and uh, read the office action. So they got to say, hey, there's this, this uh, trademark application, there's this trademark application, this trademark application, and this trademark application uh, for quash, quash, and quash ball. Uh, and they say, well, you can't have a trademark that's too close to something that's already pending or registered. They're discussing all factors why uh, even quash ball could be a problem, even though it's not identical. Uh, they say applicants mark is quash for a variety of goods and services in these classes, right? Uh, and then uh, they say that this registration is for streaming uh, of live head to head, uh, and they're saying that uh, all, all, all of the, basically they're listing the goods and services that are conflicting, 
right? And so this another quash, quash ball registration, again, talks about all sorts of different goods and services that are too close. And now they're comparing the similarity of the marks. So they say, hey, quash is confusingly similar to all of the registered marks, quash and quash ball. Uh, and uh, they're saying that marks are compared in their entireties for similarities in appearance sound connotation and commercial impression that's the that's important thing right a lot of people think that uh trademarks they're like domain names if it's not identical you're good to go you add a symbol uh you add a number at the end and uh, you can have it no right they they look at similarities in appearance sound basically sound alikes look alikes mean alikes and commercial impression okay so and that's what they're what they're saying that the, the, the marks are too close, the marks are too close. Uh, they're discussing the, the, you know, the other mark. They they discuss similarity of goods and services. And I'm not going to go go into details because it's pretty clear there's quite a lot of overlap, especially how broadly they they uh, identify the the services in the in the trademark application. And now they're talking about identification of goods and services. So if you can't win that your tra on on the on the um argument that your trademark is not confusingly similar with all those other trademarks identification of goods and services is really a moot point uh but assuming you can win then i say well and even if it wasn't um confusingly similar to those other trademarks uh you still have a problem with how you uh, uh put together the list of goods and services okay and uh basically they're saying you know delete or modify duplicate entries and there's quite a bit of them uh they so the, these are the duplicate uh entries right and they're saying there's also a bunch of stuff that's indefinite or too broad must be clarified to specify the purpose uh or function uh they always do that for software right uh and so they say uh, you know, got to make all these changes. Uh, you can't just say software development tools, right? Uh, you, you have to specify the nature, you have to spe specify the function and, and, and so on. For 28, uh, they misclassified some, uh, some items. And that's actually very surprised to see virtual reality headsets in class 28. They belong in class nine. Uh, that's what the uh, office action says. But when you're switching from class to class, that's easy, uh, especially when you have a class that, that already there. If you misclassified and you need a new class, they will ask you for additional government fees for that class, right? So here they already had class nine, so it's not that much of a problem, but you still need work to, to reclassify. Um, um, yeah, they love this idea about indefinite and too broad. Uh, so you need to uh, you need to uh, provide specifics, right? You can't say gymnastic and sporting articles not included in other classes. What the hell does that mean? Um, and that's exactly what the examiner says. Uh, and I, I can't imagine the life of an examiner having to go through that application must have been a nightmare. He saw that application like, oh my God, I have to go through pages and pages of this stuff. Uh, maybe one of the reasons it took 10 months to, <laughs> to examine. Um, for class 35, again, similar things, right? Several, several indefinite uh, entities uh, and uh, too broad. So... Class 38, same problem. Class 41, same problem. Class 42, same problem. Class 45, same problem. And so uh, the examiner uh, put together a, a revised version of what the goods and services could look like. Uh, and they do that in the U.S. often. Uh, it kind of makes it a, least, a little easier for uh, applicants to fix uh what needs to be fixed so they 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 uh require some specifications they make some changes for you and uh, uh you have to go through this and uh re re revise right so they they put all of those revisions all of those uh specifications 
and uh, that's the office action, right? <laughs> Imagine getting 61 page uh, uh, an office action in, 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 in uh, 61 pages, right? So, and they say, hey, here's how you got to respond to this. Uh, and um, it says, uh, you know, they don't accept emails as responses. You can do this and this and this and this and this and this. All right, so they got this office action. What happened then? Uh, what happened then is that uh, they changed a week after. So there's a change of address or representation form. Let's see what happened here. So um, all right. So this Frank Masapki, who was the original uh, attorney. Uh, he says the currently listed attorney of record is no longer employed by the owner company. So the guy who did it got off the record, uh, and, uh, they only kept, uh, Gideon. Okay. So they, they changed this same, same email. So it's same firm. Uh, and, uh, so they, 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 they wanted to remove the guy who, who was initially responsible for putting that together. Uh, and then they got the abandonment notice in June, on June 20th. So uh, three months later, plus a couple more weeks, they got an abandonment notice. And the abandonment notice basically said, hey, we didn't receive your response to our office action. Uh, so we'll kill your trademark application unless uh, you can explain away uh, the delay and uh, pay a petition to revive uh, the, the trademark application, right? And uh, you can revive it for a little bit of time and gives you a, a short uh, period to respond uh, and you have to, you have to file and pay for that petition. So they didn't do that. Um, they didn't do that. Uh, and uh, trademark is deemed uh, so abandoned, they didn't file anything after that. And so that's what the status says, right? Uh, the trademark is dead. The trademark is dead. And so here's, here are a few lessons here uh, about, about this application. First of all, you have to be very strategic about what you're doing, right? Uh, with, with your trademark application, you have to, there's no reason to put together goods and services that you're never going to use. Uh, but the bigger lesson, probably the biggest lesson is all of this nonsense, uh, the $2,500 in, in government fees, whatever they paid uh, to attorneys to deal with the trademark company, all of this, 100% of this could have been easily avoided by doing a proper search. Run a freaking search that shows you all the other similar trademark applications, trademark registrations uh, that uh, that have quashed them for the goods and services that are too close to yours. Had they done this, they would have immediately known that this brand has a snowball's chance in hell of getting approved by the trademarks office uh, or get, get, getting through. Why'd they do it? Well, uh, they, they didn't bother to do a search. They didn't bother to uh, uh, check what's out there, and that's why they got the 61-page uh, office action. They, they didn't even bother to respond to because they knew that responding to this would be a waste of additional resources, basically throwing good money after bad. Uh, and uh, I feel sorry for <clears throat> the, the applicant in this case because, again, they wasted... Uh, 10 months to find out that their trademark was not registrable. They probably did something to uh, build, to, uh, you know, maybe start promoting, start uh, doing something around that name uh, after they filed the trademark application. Again, only to find out that it's a brand they couldn't have. So this is a real life story of what happens when you don't do a proper trademark search. Uh, you, you end up with no trademark, no money, and uh, you've wasted uh, a lot of time uh, to, to uh, 
in, 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 the, in the expectation that you will eventually own this brand. So this is very different from what Trademark Factory does, obviously, you know, what, what we are famous for is the trademark registration services with a guaranteed result for a guaranteed budget. Uh, we start with a comprehensive search, and if we see any possible problems in whether your trademark is registrable or not, you can get a full refund right away, or you can come up with additional options, additional brands for us to check until you pick the one that we tell you is registrable and uh, we can uh, file that one instead. That's what uh, gives us the uh, record, record breaking uh, success rate of 99.3%, right? Because we don't wanna file trademarks that have no chance of going through, like this one. Like we wouldn't have never filed this quash. We would have never gone to the client and say, hey, you know, let's file in seven classes. It's only 2,500 bucks in government fees. That's insane. So all of this would have been avoided with just one simple thing. Do a proper comprehensive trademark search. See what's out there. Don't file for trademarks that you can't have. Well, a secondary lesson is uh, be more intentional with your uh, list of goods and services because if you are narrow, uh, you can get away with uh, some coexistence with more or less similar brands, maybe. Uh, but And also, don't just throw the kitchen sink in that trademark application because uh, you're not going to get a, <laughs> you're not going to get uh, yourself, you're not going to make yourself any friends at the trademark office when you make them work so hard. Uh, especially when they know that there's no genuine intention of selling all these products and services under that brand. Uh, it's pretty clear that this was just a big collection of stuff. Uh, this is actually something very similar to what people do now when they file trademarks with the use of AI, right? When they, hey, help me generate a list of goods and services. Well, that's what you're gonna get. So. Uh, that's the uh, first video that I wanted to do with a review of a real case. Again, please like this video if you liked it. If it was helpful, please post your comments below. Uh, if uh, there you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, and subscribe for more because we'll be uh, doing more of these. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.